Another alarming issue is meat safety. We all trust our lives to the USDA and meat production companies to keep us safe from E. coli and salmonella. Deadly bacteria. In the early 1990s, a deadly outbreak of E. coli at Jack in the Box killed a dozen or more people, including several children. This forced the USDA to reevaluate its inspection practices. What was found was that in 1993, the USDA was still using meat inspection procedures which haven't been updated since 1906. This means the meat you were eating was determined safe by using the poke and sniff method. How was this allowed to happen? The beef industry lobby, that's how. Thus, the USDA imposed stricter biological testing regulations. But the beef industry put up a big fight. Three times, Supreme Beef, a hamburger meat grinding plant in Texas, failed a series of tests for salmonella contamination, once with nearly 50% of its meat contaminated. Instead of complying with the new standards, they sued the USDA. And this wasn't just any ground beef plant. This was a ground beef plant that was supplying as much as 45% of the meat for the national school lunch program. I mean, this meat was going to be sold and served to kids. That there are hundreds or even thousands of animals that have contributed to a single hamburger. When you bring everything together and you make it really big and you mix up microbes from all these different places in the feedlot and then in the hamburger and then it spans out to, you know, millions of people, that's a petri dish for, for uh, food poisoning. In December, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled in favor of Supreme Beef, saying the USDA could not shut down a plant solely based on the salmonella tests. Test the beef or we won't eat! Fifth Circuit Court's ruling, I just think, pounded another nail into my son's coffin in its ruling supporting the industry's lawsuit against the United States Department of Agriculture. It basically states that it's okay to ship the public salmonella-laced burgers. But the new testing system also revealed new problems. As the regulations went into effect, the amount of contaminated meat that had to be recalled rose dramatically. Last year alone, the USDA reported 163 recalls for microbial contamination, totaling over 100 million pounds of meat. IBP is recalling nearly 300,000 pounds of ground beef this morning. Some of the beef may have been contaminated with E. coli bacteria. The beef was shipped to at least 19 states and most of it may already have been consumed. But many worry there are flaws in the recall system. Believe it or not, in this modern world, the USDA, which is the regulatory authority, cannot order the recall of contaminated meat from around the country. But they delay, and if you say, I got ground beef, and somebody says, yeah, how do you know? How much do I have to recall? How do you know it was that lot and this lot? And you delay five days or six days, 30% of it's gone. The company never gets that back. Somebody ate it and they got paid for it. A recent study by the federal government shows that when a recall is issued, on average, less than 25% of the meat is ever recovered, leading many to say that government needs mandatory recall authority. So it's a big gap in the law. And you can see now if you had food that was, let's say, contaminated with bio uh, terrorism or some sort of nefarious activity, you'd want the government to have the power to order the recall of contaminated food. One of the technologies the industry is pushing is irradiation. They believe it would ensure the safety of ground beef from almost all pathogens. But today there are only two steps or technologies that we know will eliminate E. coli in beef and that's cooking it properly when we handle the food or irradiating it before we purchase the food. My concern is that I don't want a system that says you can have fecal matter all over it and then irradiate it. Irradiated poop won't make you sick, but it's still poop. We won't eat filthy meat. None of us really know how safe the meat supply is. We do know that there's still 76 million cases of foodborne illness every year. 325,000 hospitalizations and 5,000 deaths. So the meat supply may be safer than it was 10 years ago, but it sure isn't safe enough.